Hey guys, I'm back with a, another review and say I wanted to go over the KRG Bravo. So this is part of the Hala 1500 Precision Budget Project. And one of the, at first that rifle came with this stock, which was complete garbage, right? Um, so we wanted to do a budget friendly upgrade to the stock. That was one of the first things I wanted to do because you just could not get a, a proper cheek weld with this rifle, with this stock on that, on that rifle, right? This is what came on that the, at the, for the $600 price, right? So we upgraded, I was looking at all the different options we had. For how 1500s, you're a little limited in the availability of aftermarket chassis. Um, everything's made for Remington 700, Orticas and Savages, hard to find howls, right? MDT, I think makes some, but their stuff's pretty pricey, okay? So that brought me to the KRG Bravo, which I'm like, all right, well, the KRG Bravo, first of all, looks badass. Should function be placed over that? Yeah, but you know, come on. We always wanna make our guns look cool. So here we have the KRG Bravo. So I started looking into that. My buddy had the KRG X-Ray, and I was like, okay, the ergonomics feel really good. You can actually fit it pretty well to yourself, right? Customizing it to yourself. So that's when I looked at the KRG Bravo. It's a little bit cheaper than the X-Ray, and it's actually one, uh, I think the, the X-ray is just slightly, I think one tenth of a pound heavier. Three three pounds is two point nine pounds. So went with this, right? It's made by KRG, obviously made in the USA. It, it was that company was founded by a bunch of um, uh, former, I guess, SF guys. So you know, probably good. But you know, the proof's in the pudding, as they say. So got the chassis through the. Um, how 1500 action in there, right? I have it apart right now just because I was taking it after a match, I was just taking it apart. I'm gonna retorque everything down just to make sure everything's solid and just going through. But, and while I had it apart, I'm like, all right, well, let's do a video on this, right? So, a quick overview of the Bravo it is available for the Remington 700 actions, Tikas, and How 1500s. And that's kind of the reason why I went with it. So, with that, it ranges from 350 to about four something, depending. and. Of course, the Howl was the most expensive option. I don't know why. It's probably, you know, they, they probably don't have as much made in the Howl 1500. That's what I'm just assuming. It has an overall length of pull of 12.8 to 15 inches and overall weight 2.9 pounds without the magazine. It has an aluminum bedding, right? So this whole backbone right here is aluminum. That's what the action will sit in. Follow, and it's covered by that polymer frame. Now the forend can be removed, right? And you can actually get the enclosed forend to attach basically to this, it just attaches in, all right, slides in, and then a once the action, the barreled action is dropped in, there's a screw that actually mounts this to the back buttstock part of the, of the stock, the chassis, however you want. Call it, and that keeps it solid. I've had no issues with that. This is the first time I actually took it apart and actually, oh, it comes apart, kind of cool. Colors, obviously we kept the FDE theme, right? Cause like when I got this, it was already Cerakoted, all FDE, so I'm like, eh, I was gonna go with the black, and then I don't think the black was available, so I'm like, all right, FDE it is. I mean, black was available, um, but I just want to go with the FDE, keep it going. I think, it, I thought, all right, well, it's gonna either look a little bit stupid or pretty cool, and actually, I think, I think it looks pretty cool. All right, so we're just gonna go from buttstock to tip, right? Review, kind of go over every aspect of it. So we have the buttstock back here, and it has the adjustable length of pull. You'd use that by, there's different spacers that all come included, right? So you can, you unscrew here through two Allen wrenches. Everything's Allen wrench, which is nice. Um, nothing proprietary, no proprietary tools. So you're unscrewing that, pulling that out, and then adding spacers, Allen screws go back in. Super simple. I opted for the additional toolless uh, can't height and can't adjustment. So all you gotta do is adjust right here. Super simple. So without tools now, because I think you need, you need tools the way it was set up. You'd have, yeah, you'd have to remove it and then put it in and then down screws go in. Here you're just screwing that out. So now this butt pad can now move this way, can move this way, can move up, can move down. And then you just lock it in place, tighten it back up. All right, or we'll bring it over here, lock it in place. Bring it down here. So I'll just tighten that back up. Cool. Okay, from there, QD, so little attachments right there. That's neat. 
This comes with a um, a, a a bag right a rider basically. So this I just unscrewed this little portion. Normally it's straight across. I took that out so I can get a bag in there and kind of just chill with that. You can also attach other attachments from underneath so you can get like monopods if you want to come down. However you want to do that. Um, there are replacements you can put here so it covers up that hole. I just don't really care right now. Then you have the cheek piece. Fully adjustable, super easy too because there's no tools involved. So you're literally getting behind the gun and you're adjusting it to where you have that proper sight and then you're just tightening it down. That's pretty neat, no tools whatsoever. I really like that. Then we're coming forward, we have trigger guard. That's actually part of that forend. Right, you can see here, um, it's polymer. You have the magazine release. Good, nice spring here. From here though, you have the entire aluminum bedding, I guess, right? Where that barreled action sits in. And it sits in it free float, obviously. There's no, there's no touching here. And in the front here, you have a bunch of attachment points where you can attach other accessories, like if you want to, there's mounts, picked any rail mounts on top of the barrel. You can put uh, night vision devices in front of the optics that you have. So you do have modularity there, right? Underneath, same thing, right? You have M-Lock coming all the way down here on the sides here. Uh, it comes with a Picatinny rail that you can attach in here, a little polymer, Magpul style stuff. And then in the front, in this slot here, you can attach, you can put in a, uh, I think they call it a, a, a spigot, where you can attach then the bipod will attach out here. So it's kind of out of the way here. I'll probably invest in that just because I was shooting the match this past weekend and I, the space in between the magazine and the, and the bipod kept getting in the way when I wanted to get, get on the bag certain, in certain positions and it just took up time. It was just eating time that I, I would prefer it to be out, up, you know, further out and higher up to get out of the way to give me some clearance in between there. So let's talk about accuracy a little bit, right? Because, you know, what's the reason you get a chassis? to increase the accuracy potential of your rifle. Did this chassis make this rifle more accurate? No, in the sense that this is as accurate as, as this rifle is gonna be. What we're doing is allowing that accuracy potential to come out, okay? So in this stock, it's not really free floated properly. You're not able to get a proper sight picture with that optic when it's in here. So you're not going to be able to get as much accuracy that you could have consistently out of a chassis system that is fitted to you where you there's no muscle strain you're just, you get behind the gun it fits it fits you right and the better it fits you the better it's going the better you're going to be able to shoot this rifle so that being said right we were shooting with we were shooting within the stock and you know i had to come up off the the the, the cheek piece back here basically the butt stock to get into the sight i didn't have a consistent sight picture so the grouping sizes were, were around a, about an inch and a half, about an inch and a half with that, and um, wasn't great, an inch and a half to around an inch. From there, when I shot here, I've shot, there was, I just recently shot a, a 0.7 inch group. Before that I was shooting a, I had a 0.4, 0.4-ish inch group, right? And so I would say an average of about a little over a half an inch. So that's to be expected out of the Howas. The Howas are very well-made, accurate rifles, right? The Japanese know what they're doing. And they make accurate barrels. So that's pretty sweet. You put it in a chassis, you can actually get the most potential, accuracy potential out of that barrel action. So that's where it doesn't make it more accurate, but it allows that accuracy to come out, right? So overall, who is this chassis for, right? Who should buy it? Who should look into it? Who is it not for, right? I would say it's probably for anyone trying to get into like long range shooting, precision, PRS style shooting. This is probably one of the best uh, budget, and it's not really, it's not budget, but because it's still 350 to 400, right? So that's, and that's the price of some people's rifles. But if you're gonna get into precision shooting, you do wanna get the most out of your rifle. And to do that, you're gonna need a better chassis system, a better stock. Right, so 
is this necessary? It's not necessary, but when you're getting into, I would say this is for great for beginners who are getting into PRS or anyone who just wants to shoot long range, right? They don't want to spend $1,500 on, on a chassis because there are nicer chassis out there. But then I've, I've gotten behind for that $1,000, $1,500 chassis and the, this KRG fits. I like the feel of this. I like the thumb. When you get behind this with this grip, I like having that thumb just resting right there. It's very comfortable in the hand, right? And that's another thing I did. I don't think I really talked about, but it's just very, for me, it's very, very comfortable getting into this gun. You can hold it down. You can get it to fit you really well. And then it just feels very comfortable. I really like it. All right, there's some nice MBTs out there, but again, you're paying, for the price you're paying for this whole thing, you're getting just, you're getting just this part. Jesus. You're getting just this part. And then you gotta buy the buttstock, and then you gotta get the, another forearm part, or you gotta get another grip. Everything like it doesn't come with anything. So I'm like, wow, that's pretty neat. Like now that now that three four hundred dollar chassis has turned into seventy nine hundred dollars, right? Overall, I think it's a great budget friendly package that you can get and start off with. Will you eventually move up? It depends. It depends. If you're just gonna keep shooting at the range every weekend, do you need an X-ray uh, or a whiskey three? No, not probably not really, right? If you wanna spend it. Go ahead. But if you want to get something that is going to be really super solid, right? Quality wise, yes, this is one of the, the, the lower ends price wise of a lot of chassis systems, right? Because I'd say it's a blend of a stock and a chassis, but you're getting a lot from the money that you put into this. I think it's a great investment. I think it's a great buy. And you know, this channel, I do a lot of you know more budget friendly uh, options. And accessories, things like that. And I think this really fits into the theme of that where you get a lot for the money that you're putting into it. And you can run these and you can run it and I mean, go as far as you can, right? Push, push, push this as far as you can push it. Um, and then if you want to sell it and get a, get a different chassis, get, you can always move up. You can move up to the X-Ray, right? And let's compare it to the X-Ray. Because I know people are like, well, how's it compared to the X-Ray? So it is 2.9 pounds. The X-Ray is three pounds, right? So it's slightly heavier. I don't know why. It, oh, I know why. Because it, probably come, it, it comes with the toolless height and can't adjustment, right? That you have to pay for extra for the Bravo. The X-Ray comes with that straight up. I prefer the feel of this compared to the X-Ray. That's just me. The X-Ray is also four to 450, so it's more expensive. Uh, well, not if you have a Howa, but the extra doesn't come for the Howa, only for the Tika and the Remington 700s. So if you have a Howa, you're sh not stuck with the Bravo, but you are stuck with the Bravo, which is fine. This is a great, I prefer this over the X-Ray anyways. Uh, I'm not going to compare it to the, to the Whiskey 3 chassis because that's, there's not really, that thing's nice. That thing's really nice, very well constructed. It's expensive, yeah, but for what you're getting out of it, that's also a very, very nice chassis. So I'm not gonna compare it to that it's apples to oranges, right? This to the X-ray, you're you're kind of getting close. I like this. I like the Bravo. I like the KRG Bravo. I prefer that over the X-ray. Again, that's just me. So overall, right? In conclusion, I think this is a great buy for those on a budget who are trying to get into the precision world but don't want to spend two thousand dollars on a setup, right? With this barreled action, and this we're looking at what you're looking at around four because this is the Howa, so it's a little bit more expensive. You're looking at four plus six, that's a thousand dollars, as opposed to just an MDT chassis, which is gonna be closer you know, to a thousand, and then you need a rifle still. It's up to you, it's up to you, but if you're on a budget, this is a great option, gets you into it, and for the amount of money you're spending, you get a lot of customization, right? With the even with the extra money that I spent on the toolless butt pad, I would spend it again. Very, very good purchase. And then I get that spigot, and you can always add on to it, right? So that's it. That's the KRG. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you have any questions, just comment below. Let me know.